Salam alaikum shukriya doshak apna thoda shubhat shobhi nanda naskar program politics and beyond hai aasi hamesa hai majom apna na jara apni nota amader program dekhe thakein tadir konek dhono bad aur jara aske na to na amader program hai tadir jonno bolte hoche ashole ek program ta amra politics policy people and obviously politician tadir ni kore thaki ek program ta hato apna na जानते हैं अपने पॉलिटिक्स की हवा अपना के प्रभावित करें शेष हाथे आपने रखी हुई पॉलिटिक्स के प्रभावित करते पड़े हैं अच्छा टाइम लॉक करेगी हम राप्पो दिश अब तो ही किसी बिग गो पॉलिटिशियन दे नहीं आशे खाने और शेटर अपुन अब भी दिखोटे जा चास के और इफ आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस टुडे सो लेट्स व is our popular, well-known community MP, Mr. Uh, Jim Fitzpatrick. Uh, he's a MP from Poplar Limehouse uh, since 2010, and uh, before boundary as well, I believe, you, since to, uh, 1997. How are you, Jim, today? I'm fine, thank you, Sam. How are you? It's a pleasure to get you here. Thank you very much. And pleasure. if I would like to introduce my right side, uh, well, he is uh, new in in parliamentary uh, this uh, political arena. Uh, I think he is standing first time this time. Is it? Am I right? Yeah. He uh, is uh, Mr. Ali Akhlaq al Islam. He is prospective uh, MP for Raigate uh, from Labour Group. How are you, brother, today? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Salam alaikum and uh, Salam alaikum to all the viewers. Uh, it's an honour for me to come here in front of you today. Yes, and thank you uh, very much. Thank you. You thank came you. here uh, to uh, share your experience with the uh, viewers. Uh, um, as you know, program, actually, we do every week, we run a quiz. Uh, I would like to uh, remind a uh, last week quiz. Uh, if I request Jim, uh, as you know, we, what we do every week, we do a quiz. And uh, we just uh, give a little bit uh, price to our peop uh, viewers. Uh, if you can declare Last week, winner, please, from here. Ah, anyway, okay. Yeah. And last week quiz was, when was the first local election held in Westminster City Council? Is it in 1962, 1963, and 1964? Obviously, the answer was 1964. Jim, please, if you would like to... Um, if you the winner is one of my constituents from Wapping, Akbar Ali. Wow. That's very good. Uh, uh, it's very good for me. Very good for Akbar. Yeah. Akbar, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Akbar Ali. Uh, thank you very much, brother. You have uh, for your contribution, and uh, obviously, it will inspire us to do better in future. And and jatoshong apne puroshka posizabe onik dhunnobad. Before starting program, this week we got the same uh, quiz. Uh, this week quiz will be how many parliamentary constituencies in Greater London? Is it? 63, 73, 83. Please send your answer. Just call now the TV. Email address pnb at channelieurope.tv. Uh, Jim, I would like to start now the program actually. This is a political opinion. Any information, news, political, could be economical, anything, local, national, that you can share with our viewers. And please. Um, well, the House uh, sits tomorrow to listen to the Chancellor's budget. That then gets debated for four days. That will be voted on next Monday night. Yep. Uh, the House will probably sit to Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe Thursday, and then it shuts down for the general election. The last debates in the House this evening that I uh, attended before I left to come here was the release of uh, Shakir Amir uh, from Guantanamo Bay, okay. um, where the government was under pressure to tried to induce the Americans to release him. He's been there for 13 years, as I know many constituents uh, know. Um, so a big day tomorrow, a uh, four-day debate. I'm hoping to speak on, on Friday uh, and make the contribution on behalf of uh, my constituents. And uh, then we'll be in election mode from the week after, the 30th of March at the latest. So this, is, this will be the last debate before uh, general election? The budget election. will be the last, last big, big debate. Big there may debate. be some smaller debates, but the budget's the big debate. All right. And that will be the battleground for the general election. So what was your um, uh, opinion on this uh, Guantanamo Bay? The gentleman you said he was 13 years in prison. Uh, and you, you mentioned already the government was pressured by, by whom? Is the American government? Well, it's the Americans who obviously control um, Shakir Amir's release. Um, President Obama has said that the uh, 
expect them to be released. Um, okay. They are running down Gitmo. Um, they quite clearly have said that he's not been convicted of anything. He's been there for 13 years. He was arrested the day his uh, youngest son was uh, born. He's a Saudi citizen, but he's a UK resident. He's married to a British citizen. His four children are British citizens. So there was a lot of concern across the political divide to say that the Americans should release him and release him back to Britain so he can rejoin his family. So you supported uh, of his release, you think? Uh, the whole house supported it. There wasn't even a vote on it. Um, so do you think any danger for the community? As obviously, without any reason, uh, he was not in, in Guantanamo Bay. Obviously, last 13 years he was in in uh, so a uh, hard condition. And um, it was an American agenda. As a President Obama, actually, he wanted to free up of this uh, Guantanamo Bay. And Azam, you obviously are familiar with the case, so you know that the campaign's been run for a long time. My parliamentary colleague, John McDonnell, from Hayes and Harlington, led the debate today very ably. There were many contributions from both sides of the House. The minister was on the defensive, but the government are trying to get Shakar Amir released, and hopefully in the very near future he will be able to be reunited with his family. And uh, obviously, uh, Jim, in his very important time um, of his release, as you know, is a, in e, in Syria, there is a huge uh, problem going on in IS and all of these things. At the same time, unfortunately, uh, is, though it's not your constituency, but it's in our local borough, three of the girls missing from um, same area. So what is the uh, feelings for the community as, as, as Guantanamo Bay is another person is coming to this country, do you think it will inspire or this will create any issues for further any teenagers or someone will go to uh, uh, Syria or, or somewhere else? Well, the, uh, the three uh, young ladies going yeah. to IS, IS yeah. is a, a family tragedy for all those uh, involved. Uh, goodness knows what situation they are now in. Um, they clearly are missed dreadfully by their mums and dads, their brothers and sisters, their families and friends. We don't want to see that uh, happening to other young people. But unfortunately, I think yesterday or the day before yesterday, uh, another couple of uh, teenagers, I think, they are sent back from um, Turkey. So and the is, evening, is it still going on, actually? Well, the Evening Standard this evening says that one of them, who's a grade A student, said that he was very... Uh, uh, relieved that they were stopped and he's very pleased to be back in the UK. So you have to question the motivation of young people who have been encouraged to make this trip because it, it looks as though it's a dead end for many of them. It is, but it's a huge, huge debate is going on in community, government and uh, local. Uh, actually, who and how uh, can, power, I mean, can play their role to stop this, this thing happening again? Uh, well, I think it's uh, two, three days ago, all of these uh, parents, they made a statement, joined a statement. At the same time, community is telling, well, we are doing our part. Government is failing to do that. Government is telling, no, it's not only us. It's, 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 it's parents, community needs to come together. As a local MP, and uh, you leave this area a very long time, is your local borough. How can you help or how can you help this community or the parents it's, 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 it's never going to happen again. Or it's not possible. It's not possible? No. Why not? Because we're living in a democratic country, people have freedom of choice. If individuals want to choose to leave the country and go wherever they want in the world, nobody can really stop them. What we can try and do is, is explain to them the dangers, explain to them the risks, explain to them that their future ought to be here in this country with their family, with their friends, to have a full life. But if individuals want to throw, throw all that away and choose a different course and go and be a beggar in Calcutta or go and join yeah, IS yeah. or, or yeah, go to the US and, and become a millionaire, yeah. um, th th it's, a, it's th in a democratic country. Yeah, but again, uh, it's, a dem uh, it's, a, it's a democratic country, but Everyone, we have our own responsibility. As as this, especially these three kids, young, they are underage. They are not able to understand actually what is the danger is there. But is the society or is the is the, is the, is the, is the government or the, or the parents are they fail to make them understand what is the consequence could be, or or is is it 
Is it the weird? Well, it's who, who, who it's a, you blame for? But Azam, it's a catch-22 situation. If there is greater surveillance, if there's greater oversight from the authorities on individual lives, then people will say that the government is being oppressive and they're denying human rights and freedom of choice. Uh, if the government does nothing, then they're accused of being irresponsible. irresponsible. Individuals have the choice. Individuals have the ability to make their own decisions. You say the, the individuals are underage. Um, we're having a debate at the moment where a 16 to 18 year old should have the vote. The Labour Party thinks yeah. they should have the vote. Right. In Scotland, they do have the vote. They yeah. had the vote in the referendum. Mm -hmm. So age, um, and, and you know, uh, because we yeah. are all yeah, yeah, quite yeah. adult, yeah. There, are, uh, there are some people who at age 16, 17, 18 are very mature. There are some people at 25 to 35 are very immature. Individual people mature at different times because of their experience, because of their family, because of their background, their intelligence, their ability to absorb education. The, the, all we can do is try and make sure that in, individuals have all the information available to make the right choices the right and that they're not groomed okay. um, by paedophiles or extremists or whoever. Or, or all of this. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you, Jim, uh, for your uh, valuable opinion. Um, if I ask you, uh, Ali, uh, mm. uh, is there any, anything you can share for our viewers uh, that uh, any, anything brought to your attention? Well, um, as Jim has mentioned, um, uh, we're all awaiting the budget tomorrow. Yeah. And um, hopefully this will be the large, uh, last budget of this um, uh, coalition uh, government. Um, I believe that, um, uh, you know, uh, in my constituency, I'll talk about my yeah, constituency, yeah. basically, um, obviously uh, I have had a very brilliant response from all the people there, uh, my, my supporters, and since I've been selected, I'm working hard on the local issues that matter to us. Um, the transport issue is a very big issue for us because um, from London Bridge to get to Red Hill, it's a big problem. Uh, we, have, we have asked, our government has asked, I mean, our Labour opposition have asked the present transport secretary, uh, who is Patrick McLaughlin, to reimburse uh, some of these commuters that have been constantly being delayed half an hour an hour meeting the, uh, 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 getting late for work meet, um, uh, not going on schedule on their meetings and etc and uh, uh, we've asked the present uh, transport secret secretary to reimburse some of the money but they have declined so right. this is quite a sad thing because this has been ongoing for nearly a year and it's going to be ongoing for another few years I suppose and um, um, that's just one of the issues traffic is a big issue Gatwick is another big issue and uh, we're in a so dilemma. Gatwick is in your constituency? Gatwick, it's, uh, it's not in my constituency, but it's in my outsk outskirts of my outskirts, constituency. Okay. Right. So, so we're in a dilemma where, where Gatwick wants to be expanded, but the local residents don't want it to uh, expand. Um, yeah, obviously, uh, Rygate is a very uh, uh, fluent borough. Affluent, it's, yeah. not, it's not like um, where I come from. I was born and brought up in Luton in Bedfordshire, which is a very, uh, one of the most, or if not the most deprived boroughs in the UK, along with... Um, uh, Tower Hamlet, Newham, and other boroughs, of course. So this is the um, local issue. Right. There are more issues as well. All right. Okay. Um, if I'm not wrong, I think you, uh, you, this seat is uh, under um, conservative. I think mm -hmm. for a very, very, very long time. That, uh, that's right. So, well, why, why do you think? I mean, uh, the locals, obviously, as you mentioned, a couple of issues: the transport yeah. and. and um, but there are more issues, of course. Uh, I can go into detail, but. Uh, the good thing about this constituency, you have to understand and realize, is this. Um, uh, in, up until 1996, from 96, we had 14 councillors, and uh, this constituency was a no overall control. Uh, right. We lost each, every single councillor. It's a yearly election, mm -hmm. council election every, every single year. We lost councillors up until 2011. So how lost, many councillors have you got right now? At present, we don't have any councillors. But the good thing right. about this constituency is this. Um, uh, out of the whole, sorry, constituencies, there are about six or seven or eight MPs. All right. No other uh, constituencies have ever had in the last 30, 40, 50 years any councillors. So we have proved it. We have had 50, 14 councillors in 1996 with a, no overall control. And uh, uh, it is very possible, I am very optimistic, we will gain, about, we, we will gain about a handful of councillors. 
And I am very optimistic. I will increase our share of the vote. That's fine. Um, uh, Ali, Ali, I, maybe I'll come down uh, later part of the program. Okay. Um, do you have any, any thoughts about this? Uh, as Zima was mentioning, Regarding there are three girls uh, just left from our uh, communities. Well, uh, um, all of them. Yes, are, of course. Um, as, as, as Jim has mentioned, hmm. uh, not, just, not just myself. I think the whole of the community, the wider community, Every single people in this country are worried and are very saddened regarding this uh, trage uh, tragedy because it, it affects us all in our daily lives. I mean, yeah. they are underage kids and uh, uh, their parents are worried sick what they're up to, where they are, uh, where they are what they're doing, and uh, it, it would be worrying for anyone, you know, uh, um, it, um, if I have nephews, kids, or yourself, or anyone. So it, it is a very sad situation. and. Yeah. Uh, I would like to encourage you know, obviously. So, what is your advice for the, my, uh, for my the advice for the young, uh, for the coming? My advice will be: thank you very much, all the viewers that are watching this program today. It is important that we realize um, education is very key and fundamental. Um, I think your parents need to uh, uh, be aware of what you're doing, what you're up to, what you're doing. Going on, if you're on the internet, you're on Facebook, Twitter, ex and and other materials as well, and. Um, Obviously, the community needs to play a, play a role. The community leaders, parents. So, is, is, a, is, is a both side needs to come I mean, together. E every single organisation, we all need to work together, uh, work together and help us. each other. And, right. uh, and thank you, Oliver. Right. Thank you, uh, thank you, Zim. Actually, we don't thank have sufficient time. Always, time is the biggest cons constraints in any program. Shubhra Doshak, Abna Ahmad Shahid again. Our all the beauty report. Amra Afiriya, Abu Salamikum. Assalamu alaikum shukriya dosha kar pata na ek dhono baad amader shathe thakar jonna aur amra a program a segment je topic se kisi shede hallo manifest to watch what promises done by parties program shuru kora ge amra dar abar shorn kore di zachi ei shabta hai je quiz shete hallo how many parliamentary constituencies in Greater London is it 63 73 or 83 apna na apna uttar parate parben p and b r channel i europe dot tv it's very interesting to win. Winning always nice. You know, all politicians will come to you. It's election after every five years, all politicians will come to your doorstep. They will do lots of promises, as they do all the time, and they will make promises again. Sometimes they understand the ordinary people's aspirations, what they like, what their life. Sometimes they don't. But we know actually what ordinary people understand and what they look. Jobs, education, housing, NHS, immigration, taxes, economy, Europe, these are the issues people care. Obviously, this is your time. After five years, you will give the opportunity who will run your country for next five years. Shedaki Lokoreki, we invited two of these uh, labor politicians who were uh, running. Uh, one of them is our local constituents, uh, local MP. Another one is our uh, outside of London, uh, Raigate. Yeah, Raigate one. Raigate um, if I ask uh, actually uh, Jim from you, just I have visited your website, I have seen his nice um, headings, That's what uh, was written there, uh, we will build a Britain that rewards hard work, not just privilege, and ensure the next generation does better than the last. What does it mean to you? Well, uh, <laughs> as I'm, we've yet to publish a manifesto, but it's quite clear already that we're making um, a number of basic commitments to uh, to the country. We're talking about building 200,000 homes. We're talking about investing money in the National Health Service and raising that from taxes on things like the mansion tax. We're talking about jobs guarantee for young people. We're raising the money for that from, uh, from a bank bonus. We're talking about rent protection because rents, particularly in London, are, are rocketing and everybody knows that. Um, we're proposing uh, an energy price freeze um, and cuts in energy prices because the energy companies' profits in the past 10 years have rocketed, whereas people's earning power has been declining because of uh, inflation and the austerity measures and the, the lack of pay rises. And we are also saying we'll be introducing uh, extra childcare, 
for three and four year olds so that people can get to work. So in terms of what it means, it means we want to cr make sure we create the jobs, we want to make sure people are skilled to be able to <laughs> take those jobs and that they have the ability to do it and they can enjoy a decent standard of living. So we're making a whole number of uh, promises across the piece. The manifesto will be published in time for the general election, but some of it's very clear already. Yeah, but the problem is, Jim, as, as, I, as I mentioned in my earlier uh, uh, stage, actually, the promises, politicians always make promises, and they fail to do promises. As you know, as you said, you made hundreds of promises. You can, but end of the day, where, uh, how are you going to fulfill these promises? Whatever promises I think you have given the big list, NHS, housing, uh, jobs, all of these things. So. Where will you get this money? As you know, economy is not that strong when your government came in 1997 or 2000 and or end of the 2000. But when labor government left, economy was not nice. Well, when, time, when, current well government I, 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 would take, I would take issue with you, Arasan, because mm. when the labor government left, the economy was growing. We suffered the world economic collapse in 2008 because of what the American banks did with the subprime crisis where they saddled the whole of the world with the debts because of the profits they were taking in the USA. And we all suffered as a result. If you look at what we did in Poplar, and Tower Hamlets in yeah. particular, in the course of the Labour government between 1997 and 2010, Ten. we re rebuilt almost every secondary school. We rebuilt most of the primary schools. We rebuilt most of the national health uh, health centres across the constituency. You've only got to look at Whitechapel and you can see the Royal London Hospital. We opened 25 new sure start centres in Tower Hamlets. So in terms of what we got in Tower Hamlets, we got an awful lot from the Labour government and this was to the great benefit. And I think that's why in 2010, when I stood against George Galloway and I stood against the money the Conservative Party were throwing at me, mm -hmm. I won my election and Rushanara Ali in Bethel Green and Bowl won her election. So I think the people of Tower Hamlets saw what a Labour government did for them and they wanted more. And I hope they will be voting for Rushanara and me on May the 7th this year as well. Well, again, um, as you mentioned, this is a world economic problem. No one disputed with that. And you mentioned that uh, education, jobs. Let's go for the only two things in a local perspective. If you think, I think unemployment, of job seeker along with one of the 6% six, six population from your constituency, yes. they are claiming job seeker allowance. Yes. So why is that? If it's labor is, is that 10 or 13 years, it's a good time, especially in, in, in your uh, popular limehouse, this labor running pretty long time in the whole borough. So why this situation is one of the, well, one of the, say, the poorest borough in London. Why is that? Well, I don't want to... Where, where don't is want to give, economic, all well, of this... Well, I don't want um, to give too much credit to the coalition because that's not what I'm here for. But unemployment in 1997 in Poplar and Canning Town, my own constituency, yeah, constituency was 12, 13%. Yeah. It's now down to 6%. It's been halved in the past 17 years. So there are more jobs, there are more people getting jobs. If you looked at the school performance yeah. 20 years ago in Tower Hamlets, yeah. as I'm, you know the area, yeah, I know. educational I know results were on the floor. Tower Hamlet schools are now performing better than most schools right across England. Yeah. And that means that our young people are getting better uh, GCSEs, better A-levels, more of them are going to college and university, more of them are getting apprenticeships, more of them are getting decent jobs. And the whole situation is transforming. You've only got to, got to look at housing in Tower Hamlets and it's been transformed there are 26, in the past 20 years. Are more than 26,000 people are on the list still. And we've got to do something to make sure they can yeah. off that list, especially young people, which is why we're proposing the jobs guarantee that if a young person is unemployed um, for more than six months, then we will actually make sure that they have something to do rather than stewing on the dole queue. But that's a very, very good point. As you said, you're offering, uh, any, I think, is, is anyone more than 25 years old, you will, will guarantee their job and, and this is as, as, as And we will use the bank yeah. bonuses to How pay for it. How will you create this job? How will you create your job? As you said, tax, you're going to raise your tax. How are you going to, 
facilitate to I think even grow the I business? Think well, Who will create several, jobs? several ways. First yeah. of all, I think the coalition have demonstrated that the UK economy is one of the strongest performing economies in the G7. Jobs are being created. Our challenge is that they're not creating jobs which are of appropriate value. We want to invest in infrastructure. We still need more health centres. We still need more schools. We still need more transport modes. We want to invest because the problem the coalition have had in the past five years is that they inherited an economy from us which was growing and then for three years we went into depression, recession, double dip and we saw the economy stagnating. The economy is now coming out but it All needs right. greater stimulus. We're paying more in welfare now than we were paying previously. We want to get the people who are on welfare into jobs so they can pay taxes and those tax receipts will be able to allow us to expand the economy and invest more in the public sector. But again, um, there is a problem when it comes to economy. People don't want to believe your labor leader. He forget to talk about economy and you mentioning economic success. What is the meanings to this ordinary people of economic success? As, as you mentioned, people are still struggling, that is true. Government here is coalition government last five years. But it's not the result of only five years. Labor, you had 10, 13 years good time. So who will take this burden? Do you think it's only coalition? They have failed to fulfill these people? I, think the, people I think the coalition have failed on a whole number of counts. Um, their whole orientation is wrong. They spent more time cutting taxes for millionaires rather than encouraging the living wage. We, Labour, introduced a national minimum wage. We didn't have a minimum wage in this country before the, Labour, very good thing, before yeah. the Tony Blair mm. government of mm. 1997. Mm. We introduced a national minimum wage. We're encouraging the living wage. Most of the companies in Canary Wharf are paying the living wage. That means people get a fair reward for the job that they're doing. We want to make sure that people have a decent quality of life, they have decent jobs, somewhere decent to live, that they have good services for their families, whether it's the health service, whether it's education. We want to make sure that transport is there to allow them to travel, to get to the jobs that are available to them. We're about investing in people and then those people paying taxes which can be invested in the system. The coalition's priorities are all completely wrong. And if you look at what's happened in, in Tower Hamlets mm. and you look at the impact on, on local people, the value of their earnings has been going down. Those who are unfortunately enough to be on benefits have seen their, their benefits cut. We've seen the introduction of the bedroom tax. We've seen people being moved out of the borough because of lack of building of homes. There are so many things which How the many people moved out because of uh, bedroom tax? How many people moved out from your area? Uh, the bedroom SC. tax is hitting uh, many hundreds of people in my constituency. The exact number, one of the big issues for us is more about overcrowding than under occupation. But I have got people in my constituency surgery coming to me and saying the bedroom tax is impacting on them. And we can see that the, we can see that the reduction in tax credits, we can see that the uh, reductions and benefits that have been affecting people. The lack of house building means that people have been moved out of Tower Hamlets and been dislocated from family and friends. Because, because government failed to build up here a uh, sufficient house. Yes, and, 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 and obviously it's not only for four or five years, it's, it's decades of negligence. Well, if you, look sure, at, if, you look at the last, uh, if you look at the last London mayoral election, mm -hmm. the big difference between the Labour policy and the Conservative policy is that we said 50% of all new developments should be social housing of all branches. Yeah. Key workers, shared equity, first time buyers mm -hmm. and social rented. 50% of every development. The conservative policy was no percentages. It should be a free for all. So we can see all of these new developments going on round about us in Tower Hamlets. 50% yeah. of them should be for local people. They're not. We're lucky if we're getting 25%. And that's going, to be one of the big, on that's going to be one of the big differences at the general election. We will be promising rent controls, we'll be promising more social housing, we'll be promising more first-time buyers, more for, more for key workers, and we'll be promising 200,000 homes by the time we get to 2020. Because what we saw in Tower Hamlets mm. in 1997 
were tens of thousands of homes before, below the decency threshold. So we got new kitchens, new bathrooms, new toilets, double glazing. We saw central heating and security. Lots of our rundown estates are now looking very good. Um, but what we want is new houses and new homes being built for local people, and the Labour government will deliver that. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Um, if, I, if I come to you, uh, brother, yes. as you know, Labour, they got a, uh, again, I was uh, visiting your website, and I have seen it's a better plan and a better future. Okay. They have given a strong economics foundation. Jim was uh, explaining very uh, nice way. Higher living standard for working families. And um, NHS with the time of care, time to care, obviously NHS is very important, is a, is a, is, is a vital thing for our uh, whole countries and our community, obviously. Where labor promises actually two, two billion, we found a 2.5 billion dollar, 2.5 billion pound. Uh, they will invest uh, uh, by the next uh, uh, election, um, the next parliament. Same time, conservative, they promise us uh, two billion pound. Well, the I question is, mm. again, is everybody is promising, how leverage this 2.5 billion pound will bring for NHS? Well, I believe that, uh, yeah, I mean, the NHS, um, especially a lot of the boroughs that are very, um, uh, you know, it has hit hard, uh, the waiting hours have from four hours, it's more than four hours. Um, the GPs, nurses, and, uh, and people working over time. Hmm. And uh, the, um, a lot of the, the problem is a lot what of- What is the main difference? I mean, what is the difference between these two party promises? Obviously, everybody wants to- The big difference is that the yeah. Conservatives came to office promising yep. mm -hmm. no major reorganizations. One of the first things they did was introduce a major reorganisation which cost three billion pounds out of the National Health Service budget. Mm. That was a complete waste of mm. time. And most professional clinicians were opposed to it. What we're saying is we want to make the investment. Yeah. We're saying that we'll be raising uh, the money from, example, the mansion tax, yeah. which will provide up to the, the, the part of the two and a half billion pounds you're talking about. If we get people back to work paying taxes, but we're raising money from them, we're committed to a two and a half billion pound increase in the National Health Service budget annually between 2015 and 2020. And we think that's the gap that needs to be bridged because and that's the gap that we're seeing, as Ali talks yeah. about, extended waiting times, people waiting more time again, for treatment. Again, uh, Jim, it's very nice to hear that so you, you're going to uh, raise two billion pounds from uh, it's what is called tax, a mansion tax. But you promise this whole range of things. How will you get money without borrowing? You need to borrow again. Well, if you look, at, if you look at the essential economics that mm. we're talking about, the only way that you can raise the money is by increased taxes. The only way you can increase taxes yeah. is by getting more people paying tax. The way you get more people paying taxes, you get more people into work, which is why we're saying that we will increase the investment in infrastructure mm. to create the jobs to make sure people get the opportunities so that they can earn, earn the salary and then they can pay yeah. taxes. There's yeah. no way that you can, you can, there's no way we can get out of the economic cycle without investing Again, in the country. The problem is, as I said, is a, uh, increasing tax. If you put tax on business people, why the, why, how business will thrive? How business will grow? But the, 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 the thing you mentioned is uh, minimum wages. I think you offer uh, eight pound national uh, minimum wages, uh, wages will be eight pound per hour. What conservative did, they said, well, we're not gonna raise your tax. We're not gonna do anything extra. We will give you free tax income, 12,500 pound. By who is that? By, by, by this facility, they will remove 30 million if I'm not wrong, 30 million people out of the tax, uh, uh, tax system. But what your leader is offering, well, we'll increase your minimum wage as eight pound. But you're increasing the tax. Well, I'm not. So I'm end not. of the end of the end of the month. How much money are you taking in your home? Well, I'm not entirely sure about your your figures and the numbers <laughs> that you're quoting us at. We're saying that we will reverse the millionaires' tax cut that the Conservatives give. If you're looking at tax cuts, what are the first things they did when the Conservative Party were telling us that we're all in this together, that we're all going to share the burden, that everybody will have to make a contribution? What they forgot to tell us was, 
unless you're a millionaire. <laughs> but if you're a millionaire, we're going to give you a £25,000 right. tax cut. Right. And that indicated quite clearly whose side they were on. We're saying we're going to reintroduce the 50, 50 pence tax rate for millionaires. That will get his money. The mansion tax, that will get his money. The bank bonuses tax, that will get his money. More people into work with a bigger tax take, that will get his money. We do need a strong economy. We can't tax Indeed. business out of business. We need to make sure that businesses thrive. Therefore, we will have a competitive tax rate for business. As we did when we were in power between 1997 and 2010, the economy was growing when we left government, and we want to make sure we get back to that position. But when we left government, that was not right. Economic situation was not right. The economy, anyway, the economy had two quarters of growth in yeah, 2010 yeah. when we had the recession in 2008. But the, the world economy, the the world economy collapsed. Yeah. We had settled on the recession, mm -hmm. and we had been coming out. And came in, they slumped us right back into yeah. it for three years. Yes, that's fine. That's people will judge again. Um, I w if I start up, uh, uh, brother Ali, mm. obviously Europe is the biggest issue in, in, in this election. Uh, people wants to know about uh, Europe. Uh, conservative, at least, they have given the opportunity to people, uh, opportunity to people that's uh, going for referendum. But Labour said they don't have any 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 plan. Even um, a very interesting thing, I think uh, ex-Prime uh, Minister, uh, Mr. Brown, he was telling, Europe is very important issue, uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, Brown, what he was telling, leaving the European Union would make Britain the North Korea of Europe with few friends and no influence. How, how, how do you justify right. Mr. Brown? I'm opinions? not sure. Ali will uh, tell you. Ali uh, will tell you what okay. he's meeting on the doorstep and right here. All right. Yeah, I mean, Nobody's raising Europe in Tower Hamlets. It's not an issue. It, I mean, well, I, um, maybe yeah. not uh, if, you, if you consider it as MP, it's not only mm -hmm. your if area, you will... Yeah, yeah I, I cannot. Go on, go on, yeah. Basically, um, in my constituency, we have a UKIP candidate, but right. I've not found this issue at the problem. Uh, um, I've not um, heard uh, anything about this on the doorstep. So, uh, this is just, uh, uh, I think it's just a UKIP issue. So, um, when we go on the, onto the doorstep and knock and talk to the residents, it's about, it's about the national issues are very important, of course. The main issues are the local issues. The traffic congestion in my constituency, the travel and the transport is, is, is absurd. From London Bridge to, uh, as I mentioned earlier, to um, Red Hill, commuters, it's a, it's a very busy town. Oh, no, no, there are very large and number of people there really it, it is very sad, it is very sad. Um, we, 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 our Labour opposition have asked the present incumbent uh, transport secretary uh, to reimburse some of these commuters who have missed their important meetings, schedules, work, etc., getting delayed. I myself... Again, I, Ali, I, 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 no one is here to defend them. I, 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 I do not have any I, I, information I, I, on that. My, my, experience, experience, my experience is exactly yeah, the same yeah. as I, I, I myself. People sorry. on the doorstep myself, aren't okay. asking about Europe. They're asking about, local are issues. we going to have our local health centres? Because they're under threat in Tower Hamlets, and we've been campaigning strongly on that. We were campaigning against Luke for Ramen's proposal yeah. to close some of our nurseries. We saved the nurseries. They're asking about Tower Hamlets College because the government has just spent, has just announced a 25% cut in higher education for young people who want to go back to college to retrain. These are the issues that people are asking about, as well yes. as transport yeah. and about jobs. They're not asking about Europe and Tower Hamlets. I don't think it's they're asking about no, Europe. No, not like maybe, it, maybe, maybe not in, in Tower Hamlets. Obviously, it's, it's some people I know, it's some quite large number of people, they're talking about uh, Europe issues. Yeah, the because Daily Mail, <laughs> the Daily Telegraph. <laughs> no, 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 not only Daily Mail. Who else is asking about Europe? No, it's not only Daily Mail and Daily Telegraph. It is issue. If it is not issue, how uh, your ex uh, prime minister, how he was telling, how do you justify his opinion? He just two days ago he was telling, well, we will be um, uh, North Korea of, of Europe in, well, in Europe. Can I just uh, uh, yeah. uh, come in? Uh, I think um, Europe, the re Europe issue has just come up because of the UKIP situation. Because no one, no uh, uh, last few years, you know, 10, 15, no one has ever talked about, you know, coming out of Europe or getting in, staying in Europe. I mean, it's just. Uh, UKIP, that's their only policy, that, you know, uh, that's what they rely on and they think they can gain votes. But I believe this time around, they'll be lucky to get a couple of MPs selected. That's fine, so, oh, but, but, but one but thing, don't forget, well, um, UKIP is not the third largest, uh, well, third, well, I think it's uh, their uh, popularity is 13% now? 
I think uh, uh, two MPs. Uh, well, he still is two MPs. This is just but, but what uh, Nigel Farage? He was claiming he will have uh, 20, 20 MPs. Maybe. Well, you can all and and maybe you, can, you, can, well, you, can, you can exaggerate as much as you like. You know, the Liberal Democrats can say we will have uh, two, three hundred MPs, but you know. Uh, you know, when uh, it comes to the crunch time, th that's when we, but, uh, we'll all see. But Ali's political landscape is changing. It's changing political it's opinion. Changing, it's not anymore like conservative and labor, uh, there is two ports. No, we, 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 we believe in, in, in political freedom. You know I mean? uh, and as you know, SNP is one of the big ports. No, no, SNP, they, they, they're, you know, uh, uh, they're in Scotland. But if, once we're talking on the subject of UKIP, I mean, UKIP, they're not very well, to Labour or us. They're not well, it's still they're the force. They're the force. The, yeah, the election, as yeah. yeah. the election is <laughs> going to be between think. Conservative and Labour. That's right. Tower Hamlets first. UKIP, Scottish National Party. They are nowhere. No one will. Well, no one else will in East the London, in Surrey, they are nowhere. No, well, maybe not right. East London and Surrey, but as a whole country, who will run the country next four or five well, years? I tell you what, it so, will not be Nigel Farage, yeah. and it will not be Nicola Sturgeon. It will be Ed Miliband, or That's it will right. be David Cameron. Let's, well, still, who will give you guarantee? Is Ed Miliband or, or uh, David Cameron will, will be? <laughs> they will, uh, be, the, they will be the only two people who are prospective prime ministers. None of the other minor mm. parties will be in the position to put forward a prime ministerial candidate. But, well, without doubt this, is a people, that's, 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 that's the initial thing, as uh, one of them will be prime minister. But how they will form the government, that's the important thing. As you know, there is a speculation. SNP will uh, join with uh, Labour and, and they will form a coalition. Well, uh, what is your opinion? Can I just, uh, I believe that, uh, because you are losing a huge number of seats. Ed Miliband has mentioned, we don't want to, Ed Miliband has mentioned, our leader has mentioned, we don't want to speculate. We are going, uh, we believe we will uh, form the next government with a Labour majority. And that's, and that's what we're doing. We're fighting for every for seat. Every seat. All right. And we will, if we don't win, if we don't win, then we'll have to look at the landscape. But we are confident that we have the numbers that means we are, we are within touching distance. When we lost in 2010, mm -hmm. Everybody said we're written off for a decade. Okay. We're within touching distance of being the biggest party. We are within touching distance of winning the general election in two months' time. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Ali. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Shubhya Dershak, Abhinav Shunlen, these are politicians. Ask the question. You decide, Kurban, who will win and who will come and who will form the government next time. Stay with us. We'll come back very short break. <laughs> Back to our program. Our A segment MPs and local government. Uh, before starting this program, I would like to remind you this week quiz. How many parliamentary constituencies in Greater London? Is it 63, 73, or 83? You can send your answer PNB at channel Europe TV. Uh, Jim, if I start from you. There is a quite, I mean, people are not clear sometimes how MPs and local government work. Sure. When something goes good, all those local authorities just said, we did it. We are the people who look after, say, housing, benefit system, education, business, local taxes, everything. So sometimes people cannot go to maybe MPs directly and they don't know actually how MPs are working. So how do you, what sorts of relationship between MPs and local government? How they play their uh, role in this local I think it's development? A very, I think it's a very good question, Azam, because there is a lot of confusion about how the structure yeah. operates. I think it's fair to say that local government is the local delivery of services. Um, central government collects the taxes and gives local government the money to deliver services, but they also dictate areas of policy 
um, we were discussing earlier, education and school performance, housing, um, uh, benefits, business, security, all of these issues are basically determined as a broad outline um, as a strategic objective by central government and parliament makes the big decisions and then says to local government, here's the money, you deliver it. Uh, and then local government look at their local community and they determine what the priorities, what the emphasis, um, where they should tweak the money and spend a little bit more here and a little bit more there. So it's a partnership that central government uh, give the strategic direction and local government actually do the, uh, the deployment. And of course in London, we also have the mayor and the London Over Assembly, London. which is a London strategic authority. So it comes from national to London to local. So Tower Hamlets is one of London's 33 local authorities. London is, is the London regional government and central government plays its part. So it's a partnership between the three different branches of government. The, yeah, the, that's a very good, very good explanation, actually. I'm sure uh, viewer will understand clearly. The, the, the problem is sometimes, obviously, MPs. I'm sure you were one of the prominent MPs in, in your group. You were, you were, you were in front, front bands a pretty long time. Still you were in front bands? No. No, is, is it because of after death? OK. I will, I, will, I will discuss this thing, obviously. Um, and all MPs cannot play so, like this. Ali, he's a new, new, he's a new candidate this time. If he goes to parliament, he will not be influence, influential like you. How you, you can play your role. So, all MPs, every, every, every MP all only MPs, has one vote. Indeed, in one vote. But all MPs cannot play their um, the role. How, say that a front bench MP as you, you can play. What is the problem here? Says so local, um, local authorities. They are telling well. As you mentioned earlier, Tower Hamlets, is all, they are doing very good in, in education. Local authorities claiming, look, to bring this better education, to make this good GCSE uh, level results, because of our job, we, did, we deliver it. As MP, individually, how you play your role. So this sort of, I mean, and people are confused sometimes. It's, it's easy to get confused. Um, I think we're very lucky in Tower Hamlets because um, whatever obstacles politicians put in the way of delivery, notwithstanding the mayoralty of Luke for Amman and Tower Hamlets first, um, council officers, whether it's teachers, head teachers, school governors, parents, um, whether it's the staff in the health centres, um, whether it's the cleansing department, um, all of our local government officers, the workers, the managers mm. are all doing their job to deliver services and trying to forget about the political squabbles that are taking place with Look For um, and the Election Court, the Price Waterhouse mm -hmm. Coopers report, um, the DCLG looking at how to handle yeah, that is a, that is a lot the of commissioners it. coming in to run the yeah. borough. All of these things can get in the way of delivery, but we're very lucky with the staff and the managers we have that most of the services in Tower Hamlets are being delivered by them to the benefit of local residents, despite what the mayor is doing. I'll come to you, Oliver. That's, that's the last question. Uh, um, Jim, you mentioned actually uh, PwC reports and as, as a court cases, all of this going on. Do you do you have still you have obviously is is, is a mayor he's 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 elected by the people, do you have still confidence on him? No, I don't because only forty percent forty seven percent of the people voted in that election. So about twenty five twenty six percent voted for Luke for Ramen. Um, yeah. So seventy five percent didn't vote for Luke for Ramen. Um, what we have is the government saying the council's not being run well and they're sending in commissioners yes, commission to oversee the running of the council. Of For me, that's a matter of shame, embarrassment. Um, it's bad news for Tower Hamlets that we're not trusted to run our own local council. So in terms of that happening, I think that doesn't make us look good in the eyes of the rest of London and the eyes the of the rest of the country. country. Yep. I think um, for me as a politician, I think I have failed because we have to have central government intervening in our local authority. Uh, I don't think that's good for the council. I don't think it's good for the borough. I don't think it's good for the business environment. I think it brings shame and embarrassment to all of us. Um, and I take some responsibility that I have failed because we're in this situation. 
That's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Politician doesn't take some time responsibility. You, uh, you have taken. That's very good. Um, if I come, um, Ali Bhai, tell me why Rai get you elect you as MP. As you know, it's, it's a very long time. Uh, Conservative is holding this seat, and I'm sure he's one of the uh, popular MPs, Mr. Uh, Crispin Ban. Do you think you will be able to translate uh, him? It will be uh, difficult for me, to, I'll be honest with you, um, it will be difficult for me to unseat him. Uh, but at the moment, Labour Party, the, uh, we are third in this constituency. Yeah. Um, I believe with a strong, positive campaign, I will do really well. And uh, we will gain quite a few councillors. And I think maybe... So, it, maybe so maybe you're having the same time as council elections? Council elections as well. That's right. So that will benefit us as well. Okay. Uh, that will be in my favour. And firstly, as you mentioned, he may be popular amongst his constituents, but he's not very popular amongst his party locally. Well, I have his, his, I have I'm not going to go into detail. Well, well I'm, 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 not, I'm not defending him, but I have seen his, 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 his own background. Yeah, and he had his, he had his, his problem very strong. Well. Anyway, yeah, but right. uh, yeah. that's a different issue. But I mean, um, I will fight this seat uh, in the best of my ability with all the resources that I can in a good, positive manner, in a good campaign. And uh, what we're doing, we, we, what we're finding on the doorsteps, talking to the people, is the local issues that matter. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, what are the main topic? issues uh, right now then? Uh, well, basically... If you can tell me three or four I'll, I'll tell you three or four. Um, care homes is an issue. We had one closed down a few months ago because of bad management. And the Surrey County Council at, mo at the moment, they, they, have, they have proposed, they will close all six Surrey uh, care homes in Surrey including one in my constituency. And we had 4,000 people petitioning. But if the if this Surrey County Council wanted to keep this open, they could have, hmm. but uh, they didn't. And uh, that's why, why did they, they shut it down? Well, um, they shut it down. Uh, I mean, it's a sad thing because a lot of the uh, residents living there, they've been living there for years, and it's going to be, it's going to be difficult for them to be relocated, and you know, it's going to be hard for them to adjust again. And, uh, Another big issue is transport, as I've mentioned. You know, transport is a big problem. So Red Hill is a very commuting town, and uh, it's a very, very busy town because people use it, Croydon, uh, Red Hill, right. to go to Gatwick. Mm -hmm. Secondly, that's a big issue, and we wanted the uh, government, mi government minister to reimburse some of these commuters, which they declined. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, traffic congestion is a big problem. And uh, fourthly, Gatwick ex expansion is, a, is another one. Um, a lot of the people in it will create jobs, but a lot of the people in this constituency don't uh, uh, want Gatwick to be uh, uh, Gatwick to have another runway. So right. these are three or four local uh, issues. There are more issues as well. Uh, and uh, in my campaign, I've been very positive. You know, the team that you I have, uh, yeah. we have a fantastic team. We've been campaigning locally, going out to do uh, speaking to people. I've been invited to a few hustings and debates. I'll be attending very shortly. So what are the uh, demographic situation? You are not going to be like better brothers like uh, Jim. He is enjoying a very nice uh, environment in Poplar Limehouse. Is uh, one no, of the, the funny thing is you have to. The funny thing, in, no, no, in, The funny in, thing in, in, in politics. Kingdom. So, brother, the so funny, what the are funny, the demographic situation? The funny situation thing in there? politics you have to realize is this: a lot of the members of parliament, respective of party, a lot of them have, uh, when they contest a seat, most of the times, you know. A lot of them have lost that seat. But then again, I'm very optimistic be, to be contesting uh, a parliamentary seat, especially from a very, very big party as the Labour Party. Yeah. To be selected in itself is a very, very Privilege. rigorous uh, process. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm very honoured to be selecting and contesting this uh, seat. I believe I'm optimistic I will increase our share of the votes. Um, winning or losing is not the matter. Who knows, if it's in my fate... So you're going to bring change at least? I will bring change. Uh, you're confident I'm fighting, enough? I'm very confident. I'm fi I'm, you know, the support I've had with all the, all the, uh, my campaign team, talking to the people on doorstep, it, it's a, it, you know, uh, people might, um, people are going to vote, it's gonna, uh, the votes are going to go various ways. The Greens are very popular there, the Lib Dem votes will collapse, UKIP are doing well, but I mean, everyone has, uh, uh, everyone has, uh, has a share, right. and we, we believe we will be the strongest uh, uh, party in that. In and that's and fine. Every, everybody's got to start somewhere. Yes. Before I was elected in Poplar Limehouse, not a lot of people around here knew me. <laughs> I know. So and, and not everybody knows me even now after no. 18 years. <laughs> so um, yeah, you were um, one of the successful uh, firefighter men. You work for the um, communities and country. That's where that's pretty good. And uh, yes, Azim, as I as I said. Um, um, Ali is not like um, uh, lucky enough like you. Um, 
you have one of the safest seats in, in, in London, actually. Not London, in the United Kingdom, maybe. <laughs> no. How long are you considering no, no, no. How <laughs> you nice seat as a right. to know seats at the last time. I know, I know. Well, <laughs> well um, when it's... Um, my well, majority, I, my notion majority was 2,000. Well, this was a Tory marginal. The Conservative Party, mm, as you know, as that, yeah, were throwing money at Popper and Limehouse for 18 mm, months before. Well, I, I, I cannot, you thought you would take it from me, and comment. you failed miserably. No, and I George cannot. Galloway thought he would take it from me, and he failed as well. That's good. Yeah. We can credit I, I believe, that. I believe in any, I will, I will, I will, in any election, we shouldn't be complacent. complacent. That's, well, that's right. fine. Absolutely One right. thing I will ask you is a very, very plain question. Um, how long are you considering you'll say seat is safe? Obviously, if the, no. by the cost of BME peoples here, um, well, again, I, I mentioned earlier, here uh, it's still 6% populations are unemployment came in your constituency. So how long do you think you are safe in your area? Uh, I've got no idea how long the seat may stay Labour. Um, I'm fighting on May the 7th, as Ali said, you take every election as it comes. Yep. You take nothing for granted. Um, I've been knocking on doors in Poplar since 2003. We go out every Saturday morning. Hmm. And there's nothing worse, and you know this as well as I'm. You're a politician. When you knock on the door... No, I'm, people, I'm a presenter. People, I'm a presenter tonight. But you've been, you've been a politician. <laughs> well, uh, when you knock on the door on and somebody says, oh, right there must be an election, we never see you other than election times. <laughs> and we say, no, 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 we annoy you all the time. We don't just turn up at election times. We knock all year round, all the time, over the four years of a council hmm. or over the five years of a parliament. Because we have to stay in touch with our people. Right. And in that instance, every election is the same. You fight every election as though it's the first election. You talk to people, you try and persuade them, but the people decide. And you can never take that for granted. That's right, the so people yeah. could throw us all out tomorrow. That's yep. very good. Right. Who is your main competitor in, in your constituency this time? Um, at the moment, got, well, at the moment uh, they're uh, only... Uh, one, one, one second, let me, let me finish. You've got Conservative, you've got UKIP, you've got Green, as you see... Well, I'm sure you have observed the last um, uh, mayoral elections, the results, and 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 at the same time, the whole demography is changing rapidly in in especially in your area. Sure. So, how do you consider? I mean, who is your real main competitor in this race? Well, the party that came second to me last time, and the party that came second to me previously, was the Conservative, Conservative Party. Yeah. Um, the only parties who have actually announced that they are standing in the election mm. are mm. Labour, Conservative and Green. No other party has announced a candidate yet. Okay. Um, so I don't think the Greens are a big threat here in Poplar and Limehouse. Mm. Um, they are well respected and they're <coughs> polling quite well nationally, mm. probably stronger than mm. they ever have done. Mm. But the threat to Labour in this constituency at this time is the Conservative Party as it has been for the past five elections, and I think it will continue to be. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, what is your thought about the demography, actually, as I mentioned? is is, is, is huge change, as, as you see, Scanner Europe, one of the finest, um, the most uh, um, expensive, most uh, successful business district, uh, business area, and the second um, biggest business district in the United Kingdom. It's and at the same time, just one minute away, so we're, one of the, we're living one of the poorest Indeed, in and uh, it's so ironic that where we have the very successful business district, where we now have 105, 110,000 jobs, hmm. most of them have relocated, so they'll be there for the next 50 years, so they, they should be our jobs in due course. Okay. But we've got one of the businesses in the country as well, and we've got something like 7,000 people in the borough dependent on food mm. bank services. Mm. So that's a real contradiction. Yeah, it is. Our food it bank is. is very successful and many hundreds, thousands of local people support the food bank um, and that's to the credit of the community because this means that we're all trying to help each other and look after and each so other. And, around, the, and the demographics around, are yeah, changing. Big supporter of uh, food Big support of yeah, Tahamut's food banks. Right. In, in, in 2010, there were 75,000 voters here. This year, there will be 85,000 voters here. <coughs> so 10,000 new voters in four years. Ooh. So next four so years. it's changing. It's, it's changing. And that's, it's that's, continuing no, to that, change. That's, uh, yeah, that's I can see. It's obviously it's a very good um, explanation how is the whole demography changing. So it's, it's very interesting. Yes, um, Ali, I will, well, again, we, we have uh, time constraints, obviously, obviously whenever, whenever you come to a live show. Mm -hmm. Both of you are running um, parliamentary candidate. 
you origin from Bangladesh. Uh, sorry, your four parents are there from Bangladeshi. Yeah, okay. And you are representing an area where uh, Hulbar, I believe, if I'm not wrong, 34% people are from Bangladesh origin. When did you go to Bangladesh last time? Well, uh, although I was born here, um, the last time I went was about five years ago. Five and years, uh, OK. Uh, if you become MP, how are you going to help your people um, back home in Bangladesh? Obviously, um, it is a country that I love. And mm. uh, you know, my parents come from there. I have strong links there. I mm. have a strong touch there. I, I, I try and go whenever I can. I'm looking to go in the, f you know, whenever I can in the very near future. Um, um, obviously, it is a very poor country, and um, we would like to. What see is your thought, current, well, um, current, uh, current political uh, turmoil in, in Bangladesh? Well, the current, uh, well, the current political term. Uh, I don't really follow much of the Bangladeshi politics, but uh, what I would like to say is this: uh, to all the Bangladeshi parties, let us all come together, talk to each other, and um, try and take Bangladesh and, uh, forward and, and make it more prosperous, working together collectively. Okay. That's, that's what I can say. That's great. Uh, that's, that's, that's very good. I think everybody's asking. Zim, you were one of them. You were in front bench pretty long time. You were one of the influential uh, Labour MP. You were running this area since 1997. Large number of people from Bangladeshi origin. As you know, in Bangladesh, is real political turmoil is going on. I'm sure you have visited Bangladesh maybe five, 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 six, day, five six times. And um, you are with the APPZ as well, mm -hmm. vice chair, I believe. Vice chair, yeah. Vice chair. So what is your thought on this political crisis? Obviously, people are suffering. And Bangladesh is one of the N11 countries, as you know, and after BRICS countries. So what is your suggestion in this um, uh, a bad time in Bangladesh. The, the situation in Bangladesh is of huge concern to, to me personally. Ali has just articulated mm. the same to my constituents and to, to many people in Parliament. Um, notwithstanding, Bangladesh is one of the poorest countries in the world. Mm. Over the past number of years, they've had a growth rate of 6%. 6%. You know, we would bite the hands off anybody who well, had the UK, <laughs> yeah. a 6% growth yeah. rate. So the country is moving fast into a whole different economy. Um, and to see the political turmoil that's uh, descended into at the moment is greatly frustrating, greatly concerning. Um, I put down an early day motion in the House last week which is gathering parliamentary signatures to basically say to the BNP Jamaat they should stop the street demonstrations, the strikes, the hartals, um, which is leading to much violence, um, and that the Awami League government should rein in some of the security forces and the police, uh, especially against mm. peaceful demonstrations, and that the Awami League and the BNP should talk to their supporters and and urge restraints and ask everybody to come down. Mm. Because if the situation continues to deteriorate, the country could descend into chaos. Yes. And nobody wants to see that. This is one of the one of the countries which is respected right across the world for the progress it's made in looking after its people mm. in terms of cost of living, in terms of being food self-sufficient, in terms of growing the garment industry, which it has grown. Yeah. We need to make sure Bangladesh continues to prosper. Pol political turmoil could prevent all that from all continuing. Right. Thank you, thank you, Jim. Thank you very much to come here again. Time is very short. Ali, wait. We don't have sufficient time to talk. Maybe in, in future you will come here and Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, Salamu alaikum. Thank you very much. 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 It is your time to play. As you know, who will run this country in the next four or five years? So take your decision uh, very carefully. Who will run and how the country will run. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you